Hello everybody, welcome to my channel and welcome to this episode of Free Cut File Friday for February. I am learning Illustrator and as I do that I am creating cut files and offering them to you for free. All I ask is that if you have any feedback for me, um, just leave me a comment and you can leave it here on YouTube or on my blog contact form and I'll get to um, my blog in a moment when I tell you how to find these cut files. This month I actually have two cut files for you. And this first one was actually inspired by a scrapbooking kit build that I did earlier in the month that um, used an inspiration piece that was a pre-made cut file that you could buy. Um, I have an electronic cutting machine, so I don't need to buy those things. However, I don't have every design in the world, so I made my own. And this one, of course, is focused on hearts for the month of February. And it is full background, well... Let me step back a minute. Most cutting machines have a border that um, they won't cut into, so you can't actually get a full 12 inch cut on these machines if you're a 12 by 12 scrapbooker. So this file is designed at like 11 and a half inches, and that's about as big as I understand that most um, electronic cutting machines will go that, that are 12 inch cutting machines. Now you can find bigger cutting machines on the market, but I don't have that. So this cut file was cut at um, 11 and a half inches. And let me go ahead and show you some tips for um, backing these cut files. Now this is a pretty popular style these days. And what I do is I take out the kind of the negative pieces there from the cut file and I use them as little templates. And I will just put them down on a scrap piece of paper and I make sure that they're right side up because um, if they're upside down, they won't necessarily fit properly back into their spaces because while the hearts look symmetrical, they may not be symmetrical. And then um, I just cut with a tiny bit of border around the edge and tuck them behind my file and glue them. Now, alternatively, you could put your paper behind the cut file, say if you wanted to trace out a specific part of your paper, give a light line and then cut towards the inside of the line because that will... Um, cut off any excess that might hang over that border. And you can also do that tip with photos too, and you could fill these spaces with photos. And here is a quick view of a project I made using this cut file. Now that photo is a three by five inch photo, and I just cropped and printed it at home. And it's not a great photo, but I loved catching this image of my cat um, staring at the hummingbird outside of my window. So I really wanted to use that photo, even though it's not the best. And I filled my hearts with pattern paper and journaling, and uh, that called it good for me. So the second cut file I have for you this month is a bundle, and I'm calling this the Curvy Basics cut file. And it's got a lot of basic shapes, but instead of being harsh points like on the stars and the, and the squares, it's got more rounded corners to it. So as I pull apart each shape, you'll notice that I have a whole bunch of tags with the basic shapes cut out of them. And I love to do this because you can fill those holes with pattern paper, you could fill them with sequins, enamel dots, fun things like that. You can turn them into shakers. So I like having those shapes cut out. And I'll show you some examples of what I did with them later. And then you have just the basic shapes. If you wanna cut those out of pattern papers and drop the shape into the hole, you can do it that way. I have a tag that has the word details cut out of it that you can use for journaling cards. And um, I also have the little tag reinforcer pieces. So here is just a simple circle. That's the reinforcer circle. And then the other piece I have up there on the cutting mat is the fold over reinforcer where you can glue it on the front, fold it over, and then glue it on the back. And that is great for freestanding tags if you wanna have interactive elements that you can pull in and out of um, you know, pocket pages or, or um, different pockets behind your layout. So here is what I did with these tags. Now I put that reinforcer hole, I just colored it with some ink, and then I'm just gonna make a little pocket out of this tag, and I'm gonna glue pieces that I cut apart from that scallop border, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that border in a minute. And then I can glue that, uh, the, just put little dots on the scallops and glue it down, and then I would have a pocket to use. For this one, um, I just put some lines across and wrote my journaling in there. Now you can definitely cut these out with pattern paper and then drop in the piece in there in a contrasting pattern. You can pop up those pieces onto foam dots. You could write a small message in those. You could use the tag as a place to land your date. So there's lots of things that you can do with these tags. Now what I did here was I created a jumbo tag and that's the one of the 
things I love about the electronic die cut machines because you can do any size you want. Let me leave you with one quick tip before I go. I have inserted my cut file into my software and if you don't know how to do this, I have a tutorial video that I will put in the link on how to, um, the basic uses of getting SVG cut files into your software. I eliminated the pieces that I don't want to cut. I'm going to focus on the scallop border. If you're a 12 by 12 scrapper and you want this to be a full 12 inch length scallop, you're going to need to resize it up in the resize box and type in the number 12. But if you go to cut it right away, it will you'll get this warning message saying that it won't fit on the cutting mat because of that border that I mentioned earlier that the machines need. So what you're going to have to do is rotate this thing at an angle and cut it across the diagonal of the paper. And when we see it on the mat, you'll get this angle and you will have a lot of excess paper on the edges, but I save that paper for doing punches, doing other die cuts on the machine or using it for corner designs. So don't feel like you're wasting the paper if you want to do this. Um, just use that paper for other, other um, styles of scrapbook pieces. All right, that is the free cut files for you for this month. Um, if you want to download these cut files, you'll need to go to my blog at craftysoup.com and you'll hit the freebies tab. Now I will leave a link in the show notes on this video so that you can um, head directly there. Thanks for watching and I will see you next week.